Another aspect of this template is uh, my mastering effects are effectively um, set up and ready to go um, from the outset. Um, I kind of do the same thing most of the time. I've developed this chain over many years, tweaking it, you know, swapping things in and out. Um, so this is my current chain that I've probably been using for a year or so. Um, I find with this I can get really good level. Uh, I mean, the challenge with mastering is always uh, getting level without doing anything destructive. Um, but also feeling that kind of fullness and pump that the right kind of mastering chain can give you, um, but without destroying your dynamics. So that's always the challenge with it. So this, this is kind of what I'm using at the moment. Effectively, everything here, every channel goes into one channel, which I call Leveler. Now I'm using this particular plugin, but you can really use anything. Um, the only purpose of this is um, firstly to cut out some very low end, um, 32 hertz. Uh, this is just to take out the lowest of the sub stuff, which tends to eat up your headroom. Um, and then I am always looking to just trim off the output. Um, this, is, this is something kind of important that, um, that I've kind of gotten into maybe over the last few years, is that I'm looking for every one of these channels Let's look at these electric channels, <coughs> electric guitar channels, sorry. Um, they're all set at minus six. Some of these are set as low as minus 10. What you don't want generally is to have every channel set at zero dB and, you know, maxed out so that when you're hitting your master bus, you know, everything's peaking at plus eight. You don't want that. Effectively, you're trying to leave headroom so that the dream is that you're kind of hitting this just under zero. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Um, so that the sum total of everything that you're doing by the time you're hitting your first uh, master bus here is nothing's peaking. I have this here as a little trim plug-in um, just to take the peaks off. If I've happened to have crept over and I'm plus one dB, I can just take that down. There's other ways to approach it. You can co go back and, you know, drop every channel down, or you can use VCAs, which is a, a different way to do it. Um, I find that by that stage, you've got your mix sitting exactly where you want and you don't want to go and rebalance all of those channels. So I'll just pr bring the whole mix down just slightly. But my template is set up so that I'm not going to be hitting this too hard. Um, and hopefully around, you know, like if I'm actually turning the whole mix up to hit that um, zero dB mark, um, then I'm generally pretty happy about that. It means my headroom's good. And I find that just gives you a kind of cleaner output. Effectively what I've got here is I'm hitting this at what I'd call the unmastered level um, without any peaks. Now what I do at that point actually is I tap off um, a channel here, this is a send, which goes over to an unmastered bus. And on here I just have a limited, just to catch the absolute peaks. This means that when I come to bounce out the whole um, mix, if I want to bounce out an unmastered, I have it sitting here. So that's basically tapped off from here, and that's going to give me a clean unmastered channel before it hits all of these other things. Uh, from there, I'm just going into a standard um, SSL type compressor. I find that, um, you know, usually up to 4 dB is about right. I mean, somewhere, I mean, somewhere between 2 and 4 dB of gain reduction is about where I want to hit that. It's a little different on different tracks. I'm finding on a rock track or a more band orientated track, I'm happy to you know hit that a little bit harder because it seems to sound a little bit more right. On something like a more punchy EDM type track, I don't want to hit this too hard. Um, it kind of has a a glue kind of sound, which you know sounds great on some things, but can sometimes take a little punch out of things. Um, the thing I do like about this is the auto release; it tends to pump kind of quite nicely. 
um, but you don't want it to do too much work. It's just to bring that kind of glue uh, to the mix. Uh, from there, I'm running into my EQ strip and generally I'm using a bunch of things. I'll often use a Pultec type thing. Um, I occasionally use this HEQ, um, this Cambridge, and what's become this fab filter I'm probably using the most of anything now. Okay, so out of my EQ, um, then I'm into what I call my special source bus. Um, this is everything that's kind of like I have this uh, infected mushroom pusher thing, which I can sometimes use. Sometimes it does a little too much. I have um, an Aphex, which I'm using quite regularly. Um, I have this um, uh, BX refinement thing, which is sort of a tape warmth kind of type thing. Um, Max Bass, which I use almost all the time, and always using a stereo widener. This is the one I'm using at the moment. And from there, I'm hitting, I guess, my where I'm getting most of my level from, which is going to be an L3 and um, an inflator. And this is a great tool as well. This is the SLM um, 128. Uh, this is where I can look at, you know, where I'm at with True Peaks and, um, you know, my um, RMS, etc. That's kind of a good way to go there. I don't <clears throat> tend to have a uh, a number that I'm looking at, but I'm just, you know, if I'm finding that I'm hitting too many peaks over, um, I might think about it.